morning guys not sure if you can see me or not um, just with the lighting issues it's uh, 5 58 in the morning I've been driving since about uh, 3 30 from Guelph just north of Barry right now uh, on highway 11 heading up towards the Matawa area my intention doesn't mean it's gonna work out as planned but my intention today will be to visit the Jeffrey mine left of uh, to, to the west of Perry Sound uh, some interesting history there and some interesting minerals <coughs> and also the Purdy mine and possibly the Eau Claire uh, road cutting where there's some yellow barrel now the Purdy mine really well known for its massive sheets of Muscovite mica problem uh, I just see up on the above the highway there's a sign that says uh, Matawa or excuse me um, travel warning for North Bay uh, what I'm hearing is that there's a lot of forest fires going on right now so all things working out there's no forest fires where we're going there is a an air air quality warning don't know what that means I guess we're gonna find out shortly yeah we're in a uh, Berks Falls here real quaint little place population uh, about a thousand and uh, thank you Lloyd I appreciate your uh, your advice on the local mineral deposits. Suppose this is why they called it Burke's Falls. This is kind of a good jumping off point um, for rock hounding in this particular area just east of Parry Sound. Um, one of the things to keep in mind, the pegmatites, they always form in clusters, and this, this area is one of the clusters of the pegmatites in the Parry Sound area. So you've got areas like, for example, around Perth, you've got Heibler north of Bancroft, um, a number of these sort of, uh, there's a Sudbury um, pegmatite area. The pegmatites will always be of similar age. So if we're talking about the geological province of um, uh, the Grenville area, Grenville Geological Province. We're talking pegmatites, uh, you know, 900 million to 1100 million years. However, if you go into the Superior Province, you're looking a lot older, 2000 million, 2400 million years of age. They'll always have a similar properties, the pegmatites, because they're of similar ages within the area that they're forming. So these pegmatites in this area, they're well known for the beryllium. And as I say, we're heading north towards um, the Purdy Mine, which is definitely a, a well-known pegmatite uh, with some distinctive, massive uh, muscovite mica. The sign back there, it says Sunny Sundridge, Sundridge being the town. They're almost setting themselves up for failure here. This is a, this is a mixture of um, early morning mist and forest fire smoke. Um, so uh, I know there's an air quality warning for this area right now. I, I think most of the fires are up in the North Bay area. We're going to hang a right at North Bay and head out towards Matawa and then do a loop around and hopefully reach the Purdy Mine. See it says right there, Sundridge. So we're merging here um, onto Highway 17 eastbound to Ottawa. That's in the direction. So from the beautiful little town of Matawa, just got a fantastic high hill to the to the side. It's it's very picturesque, but you're from Matawa. So here we are. We're on the outer edge of Matawa, the town of Matawa on the Matawa River. Um, you can see the rail line which runs into town. Uh, I know it looks pretty hazy. Uh, that's the forest fires. I think there's 41 forest fires burning right now. There are evacuation orders certain parts of the uh, province to the west of here. Um, this area really developed in the late 18, 1800s as a result of the, uh, the arrival of the rail line um, and what it brought with it was the lumbering industry so the river you know the logs and so forth were floated down the river. Uh, this was a shipment point for minerals and what have you that were mined uh, in particular from our perspective down the 533, 13.4 kilometers, hanging a left to the Purdy mine. This is where they extracted the mica. 
and sh shipped it down into Matawa, and then from here by um, uh, rail out to the wider world. Uh, Purdy Mine, hoping we can get there. All depends on the condition of the roads and whether my car can handle it, or whether I'm willing to risk it, I guess is a better way to say it. There's a entitled fellow, look at him. Don't know what the heck this thing is. <laughs> in the middle of the road. Doesn't exactly feel like moving for the traffic. Guess I gotta go around him. There we go, you're the boss. So just as you turn off Highway 17, down along the 633, um, you can see this on the corner. This, this is the outfitting company. They do canoes, that kind of thing. And of course, we're heading down this way and we're gonna hang a left shortly, which takes us to the Purdy, the second Purdy mine. Hang a left here. This is Suzanne's Road. You're going to go for 1.3k. At that point, you're going to stop and follow the wagon road for another 400, 400 meters. Do you suppose that's the wagon road? That's what I see in front of me. I'm pretty sure that's it. Two choices of direction, right fork and a left fork as soon as you enter into the uh, field here. Um, I'm just taking a wild guess. I'm going to follow the right because I don't see any sort of indicator minerals laying on the ground from an old mine. So let's just see. As you'd expect, the horse flies are just outrageous here right now. Um, I'm seeing lots of, you know, unusual shapes that aren't natural. Uh, looks like areas where dirt has been piled. Um, can't really be sure exactly where the diggings were. I'm going to poke around more, but if not, I'll just write this area off to Another wonderful pegmatite, deeply buried by the forest. Right. So that's a pit that's been dug right there, just to the right of the wagon trail that I followed. The soil from that pit probably ended up over there on the embankment. Um, exploratory, not really sure. Uh, I'm going to try the other fork as I came in, just see if that leads me more directly to something that's Rock hand leads us. This is as much a wagon trail as the last one. Thankfully an ATV has preceded me. Uh, lovely herby smell here. A bit like bee bomb, but not quite. Ooh, lovely feldspar quartz boulder laying off to the side. I think that's a really telling feature. And this is a nice, more clearly defined path than the other one. Um, we're going uphill. Might be an easier spot to have mined as well. Again, I'm always looking for telltale rubble on the cart track. So lots of quartz on the path. Tells me this pegmatite probably got a core of quartz, like the center of it. Felspar towards the outer walls. A lot of the accessory minerals will be concentrated towards the outer walls as well. Could have been formed by a fracture, which is just infilled with the molten material, much as is the case to the north of here at the other Purdy mine. Um, several different fissures there, traced back to some sort of fault line in the vicinity. I wonder if this is the case as well. Very distinct uh, barrier between the pegmatite itself and the wall rock. Further conclusive proof as to our nearing a fantastic Mineral deposit, look at that. Whole hillside there of tailings. That's significant rock hounding material. Look at this, large crystals of quartz, feldspar. I'm gonna have a little route around here, look for the trenches. Oh, there's the trench right here. Up around the corner, guys, look at this. This is quite significant. Whoa. You don't suppose this is the old Purdy mine, do you? I wonder how deep that is. Anyway, um, very smooth sides along there. It may well indicate the fracture filling situation. Um, where should I, I, I believe there's more than one cutting. So this is one. I'm gonna follow along there a little bit, see what I can see. Uh, very beautiful though, you know, as a rock hound. Looks like it was about 25 feet wide, deep, deep valley beneath me. Uh, I'm gonna follow down that way and just see it. But uh, basically, the wider the pegmatite, the more 
interesting its minerals the larger the crystals that's the general rule of thumb and as I say accessory minerals are usually towards the outer wall so this is entering along the uh, the fissure from the back um, again let's have a look at the walls here quite smooth okay you can see the feldspar there um, obviously this was done in the early 19 early to mid 1900s biotite muscovite this is one of the uh, pegmatites for which uh, this area is so well known that is the cluster of the Matawa pegmatites so yeah lovely smooth walls behind me large fell spires off to the other side um, Matawa area yeah the big thing here was muscovite used in electronics especially during the war World War II that is American company I can't recall what it was called basically bought up the uh, the rights to the uh, muscovite huge sheets sometimes nine and a half feet wide at the uh, more northerly of the purdy purdy mines uh, it's a basically it's a potassium mica clear or white uh, this is more focused on biotite not as valuable as the muscovite was but uh, very interesting to visit I can see quartz in the walls um, you can see the quartz right there you can see this lovely pink feldspar I think I'll look in the rubble just to see if there's any particular accessory minerals that I might like to delve into um, see what I can dig out uh, but definitely worth a visit I know it's a long drive but still so when you're talking about um, extraction from the pegmatites and their actual industrial value the biggest um, biggest value overall I believe it was in the range of 200 million up to 1965 was was the uranites and the the, the radioactives um, followed by feldspar that dropped right down to like four million dollars in value the feldspar uh, then we follow up I believe it was with mica in the same value range around four million uh, and then into the rare earths uh, barrels other obscure minerals that came out of these particular clusters of pegmatite through uh, through Ontario central and eastern Ontario. old artifacts old tin or zinc buckets lying here in the bush but yeah I think this is your best spot here for actually looking for specimens I mean it's a crapshoot you're gonna get everything all mixed up everything from what's in the core to the wall rock um, but it's all neatly broken and exposed for you to rummage through expect some rare earth some alanite here um, probably some zircon you know small tetragonal prisms with uh, terminations pyramidal terminations um, what else probably some uranite uh, a range of those types of minerals that are quite typical to the to the pegmatites uh, of this area and how could I forget to mention appetite little piece of appetite there um, tons and tons of mica uh, basically biotite mica with almost a brassy sheen sometimes that's kind of typical so this is a definitely an interesting place uh, I would not make the trip from Toronto solely for the purpose of coming to this particular mine however if you're partnering it up with a couple of other places maybe the Jeffrey mine uh, maybe the um, the Sunstone occurrence up at uh, Bernard Lake just outside uh, Sun uh, Sundridge uh, you know it, it might fit in as a as an overall visit I mean pegmatites it's a basic granitic pegmatite I mean your pegmatites come in all varieties you got cyanitic pegmatites you've got nephilim pegmatites um, rare earth pegmatites you know with lithium and whatever uh, it's interesting to see but definitely not uh, not a major source of unique and rare minerals or crystals or anything like that. Just to make it simple for you, you've just come off the road. You're 20 foot in, um, into the just through these little trees, and you're in this field. What you want to do? Go to the left. That's the route you want to follow. That way, 
This way takes you nowhere in particular other than into dense bush. That way will take you to a little car track right over there. It goes into the forest. You want to follow that for about 400 meters. You can't miss it as you're coming up on it. Huge, huge pile of tailings and two nice deep furrows. Okay, 1.3 kilometers along Suzanne's Road as they call it. Right here. Cut in here. Stay off to the left through the field and out through the left side of the field onto the cart track.